This little telescope, the Sharpstar 61 EDPH2, is a great little telescope that I've been using a lot, except that recently I find out that it might actually kind of be terrible. Let's have a look. Hey guys, Quid the Lazy Geek here and welcome back to my balcony. If you are a frequent viewer of this channel, you know that I've been using this little telescope as my primary workhorse. And I really love this thing because it's small, it's light, it's easy to use, it just works. And after I broke my back in an accident uh, earlier this year, it's really the telescope that motivated me to go back to the uh, hobby. I really like this little thing. And I like it so much that I even uh, like pimped, pimped it up with the ASI Air Plus on top recently. Um, I also uh, received received a cable management 3D printed parts from a subscriber and it's made my my cable management so much better um, it doesn't look good mind you but it is very usable it doesn't snag into the wind or in the mount and I had a single cable connecting me uh, connecting from the telescope to the mount so I spent a lot of time really making my little setup all around this telescope being really good which is why I'm really worried about what I've been seeing with this telescope recently because up to now I use this telescope pretty much exclusively in color narrowband meaning that I have a color camera at the back here and then I have a filter holder here that contains um, an Optolong L Extreme filter. The Optolong L Extreme will pick up two very specific colors in very tight band passes, one in the deep red, uh, H-alpha, and the other in the blue-green spectrum, oxygen-3. And those two band passes are used to, um, to uh, image emission and planetary nebulae, and they filter out most of the light pollution. It's really a boon and, and something I cannot do without uh, here in Tokyo. But I had made an assumption that because at the same time we're imaging in the red spectrum and in the blue-green spectrum, any chromatic aberrations or errors like that in the telescope would be visible with that filter. It turns out it's not the case. How do I know? I've been, uh, for the past week or so, I spent all of my imaging time I spent all of my Im imaging time imaging the Triangulum Galaxy M33 from here in Tokyo, which is not something I would typically recommend you do. <laughs> and I have like something like 15 hours of data on it. And I used for that a filter, uh, the, like a very cheap luminance filter, which is a UV IR cut filter that is made by SV Boni. So it's a very cheap, very, um, uh, low brand kind of filter so I'm kind of hoping that what I'm seeing comes from the filter but I doubt it what am I seeing let's have a look okay and now we are on my computer I am looking at the image that I got this is the result of a stack of around 1007 something like that 700 frames 30 seconds each for a total imaging time of almost 15 hours from here so I spent quite a few nights on that. I removed all of the um, um, subframes that I had with clouds in them and then I stacked them, stacked all of that and I used the normalized scale gradient which really helped uh, the image. And this is the result with a, an unlinked um, screen transfer function. And let's look at those stars and you can see the stars have a blue magenta kind of halo around them and I thought like maybe it's the natural color of the star but then I looked like we also have like this kind of yellowish kind of star and it is also uh, surrounded by some kind of uh, of blue halo uh, here almost around the whole star uh, as if and even this one has a blue halo around there all of the stars seem to have a blue halo around them and that's that really shocked me because I thought that I wouldn't see that and I'm wondering like, okay, am, am I missing something? And it doesn't look too bad right now, but wait until I um, actually uh, stretch the image. And this is right after a masked stretch um, that, that helps keep the color of stars. And immediately you can see the, the stars are far too colorful. Playing with curves, curves doesn't cheer me up. Look, look at that. So we're, we're looking more at the, the image. We do have a galaxy, but let's, let's try to add some of the blue arms to the galaxy, some of the saturation. Look at those stars. The background is not great either, but the main point is the stars, and especially 
the let me apply that so we see it in all its uh, horror glory the halo around each of those stars is huge it's a huge halo around it and it's also around non-blue stars like this star here as well even though it's like yellowish overall it has this kind of blue purple halo around it so now I'm really wondering is this because of the uh, sharp star uh, telescope itself or is it for instance my uh, UV IR cut filter from SV Bunny which is really cheap I don't know um, I don't know because I don't have another UV IR filter I'll probably buy one from batter but please let me know your thoughts in the comments I wanted to quickly share this uh, with my subscribers because I, I know a lot look at me using this telescope and might you know buy the telescope based on my advice I do not know whether this is the telescope or something else but please be aware of that um, in your choice I mean doesn't it look like and smell like and and like feel like ooh, chromatic aberration I mean it, it really looks like it to me it could be reflections internal reflections from the filter I don't know for sure but it feels weird now this is not just me because for instance when I search forums like cloudy nights I see things like this uh, similar chromatic aberration with the 6180 ph2 the ASI 533 m3 but also an astrodon L filter and you can hardly do better in terms of a luminance or UV IR cut filter so I don't think it's the SV bony filter and then on the same threads on cloudy nights they linked to uh, this spot diagram uh, that's with the full frame reducer that they provide and you can see red in the middle blue all around so it's like publicized at least it's not false advertisement and I thought I would have seen that with my narrowband filter because it does have blue green but not blue enough apparently and I remember testing with single frames on a color camera with my sharp cap without any filter in the, mi the middle even no L filter and I didn't see that but I guess that really you have to look at the stacked result to really see the chromatic aberration for me the individual subs with a color camera looked fine um, and I think people asked me about chromatic aberration I said like I don't, I don't see any on my on my scope but I was completely wrong so I really want to publicize this because um, and also what I see here is like it could also happen maybe with the radiant raptor uh, version of the uh, of the shop star who knows and uh, I don't know I don't know and I read a lot of comments that seem to say that this is not due to the actual objective lens of the telescope it's due to the focal reducer because apparently the focal reducer used by sharp star and this is hearsay I don't know if it's true but it's the same as they used for the old version of the sharp star, star, uh, sharp star back when it was a doublet telescope now it's a triplet they use the same focal reducer and the focal reducer is according to many what is introducing this chromatic aberration um, and some have replaced that focal reducer with a field flattener from another brand or a, a focal reducer from, a, from another brand and gotten much better results without chromatic aberration I'm not happy about that because really I had to do a lot of work to try and get rid of that chromatic aberration in my final image and you can see after processing this is kind of what I get um, and uh, from Tokyo it's not bad I mean there's this chromatic noise all over the place it's it's horrible but especially for 15 hours can you imagine spending 15 hours on an object and still seeing that much noise welcome to Tokyo um, the stars I've managed to kind of like get their um, chromatic aberration down using like color masks so uh, yeah so this is again a video to make people aware that okay my sharp star telescope which I thought to be really good might not be as good as I thought it was I don't think it's the luminance filter I think it is the telescope and based on other people's feedback I believe it is the focal reducer and I'll think of workarounds and like there's tons of things that are really accumulating these days I, I found that my ASCAR lens might not be as good as it is and then I was trying to image through my Newtonian the R R200 SS and I found like terrible star shapes I hope it's focus or sag but I need to test it out and this now there's this chromatic error aberration I'm like there's too many things that are piling up at the same time I'm like 
Should I just sell everything and buy a Raza 8? Let me know down in the comments. And with that, thank you so much for watching. I hope this was useful, especially if you were considering buying that little telescope. I still think like for narrowband, dual-band imaging, it's a great telescope. Uh, it's, it's very fast focal ratio, it's really nice. Uh, but uh, yeah, please take into account what I mentioned in this video for, um, for your purchase. Um, and uh, yeah, if you're new to the channel, by the way, and you're into astronomy, astrophotography, feel free to go down below, click that subscribe button, that bell icon. Uh, I promise you won't regret it. Uh, also, please leave a like down below to let the YouTube algorithm uh, know that uh, they, it might want to show this video to other people. And with that, again, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget whenever you can to look at the stars, whenever the, the skies are clear. And I'll see you next time.